Welcome to Hindu Analysis, July 6, 2018. So today we are going to discuss all these topics. So the first article is, is India's foreign policy adrift? Which means whether the India's foreign policy is going in the right direction or not. So in today's article, they are discussing it in three ways. One is, is it on stumble? Which means it is not going in the right direction what we expect. And second one is, is it on the right way? Which means, is it going in the right way what we expect? And third one is, is it complicated? Which means uh, we are taking a balanced stand on this issue. So first we are going to see it's on stumble, which means yes, it's stumbling, which means the India's foreign policy is drifted away from what we expect. So these are the points which ensures that yes, it's uh, India's foreign policy is stumbling. So the first one is India has lost its eminent position in South Asia as a consequences of uh, adventurism in neighborhood, which means pro-China in the sense now the Southeast Asian countries, which before uh, rely on India or dependent on India or cooperate with India is now uh, taking a shift towards the China. So it is also a concern for India's foreign policy. It is the major concern for India's foreign policy. So the second one is in terms of US. For US also, uh, it rely first on India in Afghan policy, but as of now, it rely on Pakistan. So for US also in Afghan uh, policy, India is a non-player. So it is also again a major concern. So the third one is the abandonment of NAM, which is non-alignment movement. So non-alignment movement in the sense, so during Cold War itself, we took a stand like we are not going in either direction of the countries, whoever was fighting. So it is non-alignment means uh, we are not aligning to any side. We are on the uh, center track. So it now this government is now abandoning this NAM, which is the non-alignment movement. So it is also again a major concern which could affect the foreign policy of India with other countries. The fourth major concern is like our drift towards US. So our recent drift towards US may hurt our relationship with Russia and China. So it could be visibly seen in case of Russia means it's the anti-terror exercise which Russia is held with Pakistan uh, in the name of Drushba 2017. So and in case of China, uh, it is like the Doklam standoff could be uh, visibly made that our foreign policy uh, is like a little bit deteriorating. So <clears throat> and again, uh, India is again boycotting this BRI, which is the Belt Road Initiative. So for the past few years, uh, we could visibly see this uh, foreign policies uh, deterioration by means of these factors, like our relationship with Pakistan is deteriorating and we blockaded Nepal also and we lost Sri Lanka to China, which means China could uh, install its naval base or military base in Sri Lanka. And uh, the relationship between India and Maldives is also getting belittled because we are getting belittled by the Maldives and even Seychelles didn't agree to our agreement. So these are all indicates that India's foreign policy is adrifted from what we are actually expecting it will go. Recently we participated in Wuhan and Sochi summit, Wuhan with China and Sochi with Russia. So it also looked as a patch up efforts to make our adriftment little bit uh, lower. So now we are going to see the second point of view, which is, yes, we are on the right way that our India's foreign policy is on the right way, what we expect. So we all know that India uh, wants to evolve as a, a great power. This is what our Prime Minister Narendra Modi said. So we, uh, by making sure that these uh, points are getting implemented, we can easily achieve uh, that thing. So the first one is the proactive and flexible diplomacy, which means before we are like taking some rigid stand in case of diplomatic relations with other countries but now we are taking some proactive and flexible diplomacy which could patch up these foreign policies uh, of India with other countries in a very good manner so the second one is the cultural and commercial diplomacy with other countries like Nepal Bhutan and all Indian diaspora meets are also often conducted so the uh, next one is more FDI inflows into our country by means of ease of doing business uh, improvement and next one is improvement in global ranking indices also indicate that our India's foreign policy is not deteriorating rather it is going on the right track and the next one is like the closer defense and strategic cooperation which we previously restrained with US Israel and Japan is now uh, we started to make uh, some closer defense and strategic cooperation with these three countries so even we are projected even our country is excessively projected as a pro-American but when our Indian interests are getting hampered we are always ready for an open dialogue the recent strategic resolve over Doklam issue, surgical strikes against Pakistan, humanitarian rescue mission in Bangladesh, etc. also ensures that India's foreign policies are not deteriorating and it is on the right track. 
so the third stand is like a it is complicated which means they are taking some balanced stand it is not either going in the right direction and it is not going in the wrong direction it is complicated and as of now we couldn't conclude what is actually going in the india's foreign policy uh, if you see in this slide we could separate like this so the first three points uh, mentions that uh, actually we are deteriorating our foreign policies are deteriorating these all points mentions that our foreign policy is not deteriorating and it is going on the right track so if you see the first point russia enmeshing with pakistan and china russia is now focusing on relationship with pakistan and china which is a little bit concern for us as of now and our neighbors like maldives nepal and sri lanka is also exploiting near opportunities with china rather than with india because before they are completely dependent on us or they are cooperating with us in all terms of matter but now they want to exploit some near opportunities with china so it is also again a concern so the third one is china is also emerging as a global regional economic and strategic footprint which in future could become a dominant part than india so the next one is like us has some document called national security strategy document in that document uh, they mentioned like india as a leading global power and strong strategic and defense partner which ensures that india's foreign policy is not deteriorating rather it is open to all the opportunities available if in case of europe because of trump's policies they are now uh, shifting their focus towards india so they want some economic opportunities with india now so it is like uh, again we are open to the uh, foreign policies with europe and in indo pacific region relationship with japan and asia continue to strengthen rather than its weakening so it is also again ensure that we are on the right track in the gulf region especially in uae and in saudi arabia we are having our uh, diasporas there and we are receiving a lot of remittances from the gulf region and our energy security and sovereign wealth investment funds are greatly dependent on this gulf regions so again which ensures that our foreign policy is not deteriorating and if you see this in case of iran we have the chabagar port which is the connectivity to afghanistan and to central asia so this chabahar port is under our control so that means we are only uh, maintaining this port in iran so which is also again ensuring that we are on the right track in case of india's foreign policy the picture is complicated as a conclusion we can say that the foreign policy making always faces challenges in an evolving world because today's world is a multipolar world rather than the bipolar world in the history so the second article is political messaging and administrative alerts so these two are the keys to stop the strings of lynching so in recent days we all know that the mobs are materialized to be the people to kill the people they suspect in case of any fake news that they get through a uh, facebook whatsapp or anything they started attacking the people without any basis information at all so the meti which is the ministry of electronics and information technology asked the whatsapp to take the remedial measures to prevent the proliferation of these fake messages which induces these mob violation but we all know that whatever the whatsapp message or facebook message it's in encrypted so it is unclear how to read what the actual content before it starts spreading as a remedy to this problem the district administration and the gram panchayat should persuade the local people from falling under the prey of rumors the ministry has also urged the states and the union territories to keep a watch for earlier detection of rumors like this child lifting and all in the whatsapp messages which are spreading and also the ministry has asked the state to initiate some effective measures to counter these kind of uh, fake messages so the states and the union territories have also been asked to direct the district administrations to identify the vulnerable areas whichever could easily get uh, a prey to these kind of fake messages and conduct some community outreach programs to those people for creating the awareness and building the confidence among the people and stop spreading of these fake messages the government has also directed the whatsapp to immediately take the steps to prevent the spreading of these irresponsible and explosive messages stating that the social media couldn't evade its responsibility in conclusion it's not just the government to take the responsibility to stop all these fake messages spreading and all it is also the civil society's responsibility be a part of preventing this spread of the fake news so the next article is allow gambling in sports but regulate it says the law panel so this is the background information so earlier the court has asked the law commission to look into legalizing betting in cricket but not sports as a whole only in cricket they want to legalize this betting recently the law commission of india headed by former supreme court judge justice bs chauhan recommended 
cashless gambling in sports that means entire sports not just cricket so it's for entire sports they just want to make this betting as legal so by stating these points as a positive if we could make this betting as legal so if in case uh, the gambling is becoming legal in all sports then it will increase the revenue for the government and we could make use of that revenue for public welfare schemes and it will also be a blow to unlawful gambling whatever took place in underground but the doesn't note that means what are the negatives if in case this gambling is legalized so india as a poor country we all know so legalized gambling shouldn't be allowed here so this is the first major concern if we make gambling legalized then it leads to the we all know that rich gets richer and poor gets poor attitude and also this gambling and all still a social stigma in our country so it is not welcome move and we also uh, have the responsibility to save our future generation from treading into these unethical paths so it is our responsibility that we if we make this gambling as a legal there might be a possibility that our future generation may get into this trap of unethical paths of gambling so the next article is give legal backing to msp says the panel so what in case of what is this legal backing which means if at all a farmer couldn't avail uh, couldn't be able to avail this msp then they should be legally backed in the sense they could be able to go to the court and uh, they can ask for the remedy so that is what this legal backing means so the cacp which is uh, the commission for agriculture costs and prices says the farmer must be able to sell their uh, produce at msp the commission for agriculture cost and prices which is the cacp is a statutory panel under ministry of agriculture it also makes the recommendation for msps of 23 karif and drabi crops so its suggestions uh, this is very important because the cacp suggestions are not binding on the government it is just the recommendations so in its report in the cacp's report titled price policy for karif crops for the marketing season of 2018 to 2019 the cacp notes that stated that the procurement mechanism whatever we followed in our country is broken for most crops and for most farmers it is not going in the direction what we expect so often farmers of remote areas who are living far away do not have sufficient access to apmcs so they what they have to do is they have to obviously go for the local hearts or local markets to sell their produce where they only get minimum amount which is below msp so this is also a major drawback to the farmers so what they suggested is the strong procurement operations needed to be expanded to the neglected regions or remote areas so that the farmers could easily go and sell their products uh, to the uh, specified or mentioned msp particularly like eastern and northeastern regions so this is what the cacp says